All right, y'all, welcome back to Kamar Arms Channel. Okay, so today we're checking out a very cool training tool that I got sent to me. Now, this is something that I got a little bit of hands-on when I was over at SHOT Show, and I gotta say, it was pretty freaking cool. I've seen a lot of other sort of dry fire pistol trainers and whatnot, usually ones that like kind of just use lasers and you kind of just see where the laser goes on the target. But this one is very, very unique in that it gives you a lot of data that you can use to kind of ascertain how you're messing up certain fundamentals. And it works for a pistol and rifle. So this is the Mantis X10 Elite. Now, I'll show you the box. I'll kind of show you what goes inside um, if you wanna see that. But it's really nothing too crazy. It's basically everything you need to get set up. It's got some details as far as like the application itself. Of course, it's got the device. And then it's got a sticker, which the kids definitely appreciated, and it's got a few other things. So you can see, you open it up, you have like your little foam, and then you have the case itself, with, which pretty much has like everything in it. So it's kind of cool that it comes with a little, little hard case. So it's got everything you need to mount it. It's got like a little Picatinny rail section with like some 3M adhe adhesive. So if your pistol or rifle doesn't actually have like a Picatinny rail, you can attach it using something like this. And it's got like mounting screws. It's got like a, a clamp you can use. Also, if you wanna like maybe clamp it to your barrel or something, I guess. Yeah, there's a lot of really solid options for mounting this thing. So, I mean, you shouldn't have any issues getting it to work with whatever firearm you're trying to use it for. Now, as far as the X10 itself, it's this little device right here. So you have like a little USB charging cable, like a micro USB charging cable. And then you also have the actual sort of uh, latch that you would use to kind of mount it into your Picatinny rail. You got your power button on the bottom. You just press that. You also use it to, to actually sync to your application, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. But yeah, it's, it's a very simple little thing but it's got like a whole bunch of like really sensitive gyroscopes and a lot of really kind of fancy magic stuff going on inside of it. So whenever you're actually mounting it to your weapon, so let's say I'm dry firing, again, you can use it for dry fire and live fire, which is awesome. Cause again, you can kind of see how your fundamentals are shifting in regards to dry fire, but also with that live fire application, which is really, really cool. So basically what it does is whenever you mount it to your handgun or your rifle or what have you, it'll sort of record the movement right up until that shot. And then it'll record when the shot actually goes off. I guess it kind of just hears like the click. Um, and I'll kind of talk about how that has a little bit of issues with certain firearms. And then it also measures the movements after you actually do that click or the bang, of course, if you're doing a live fire. Now it's a pretty simple concept, but again, it works really well, especially with the application. The application has a lot of data you can use to kind of see what you're, you're messing up or why your fundamentals are sort of changing when you go from dry fire to live fire. So yeah, again, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is slide it onto your Picatinny rail. You need to latch it into that Picatinny rail slot and that's pretty much it. So you can see I have a light bearing holster we can kind of see it, but this is kind of what I've been using to actually work on my draws. And again, that's another thing. If you're trying to go for like quick draws, you can see how your fundamentals are shifting when you're trying to speed up the pace a little bit. Now, with that being said, I haven't had any issues getting the Mantis to fit with any of my light bearing holsters. And that's with the Surefire X300, the Streamlights uh, TLR1. So yeah, if you're kind of worrying about that or you're trying to get this device for applications like that, like holster drills, it does work pretty well as long as it's like it's a, a light bearing holster. But yeah, it's pretty simple. Again, you just mount it like that. You can do whatever. They actually have a bunch of games and stuff in the application, which are, are really kind of fun because you can do like positive identification. You can try and time yourself, whether it be like holster drills or other things. And of course you can just go for accuracy. But again, since it's only going off of the movement of the gun, not necessarily like shooting a laser or anything, it, you, can, you can pretty much use anything as an aiming point because it's not really factoring in the aiming point, it's factoring in the movement. So let's say if I'm trying to focus on something really small, really specific, it's not going to matter because again, it's only factoring that movement. And I know that might be a little confusing, it was kind of confusing to me, but this thing isn't necessarily factoring in your point of impact, it's factoring in what you're doing here and what you're messing up here, which will pretty much tell you where your impact is going to be. Because if I'm dropping the gun, obviously it can pick up that movement and knows that I'm going to have some low shots. If I'm pushing the gun to the left or to the right, it's going to pick up on that movement. Because everything you do here 
is going to register downrange. And of course, the further you go, the more it's going to be more like prominent. But again, it's not necessarily focusing on all that. It's focusing on, okay, I just pulled the trigger to the right a little bit, or I'm not having enough pressure, or I'm pushing too much with my, my firing hand. It's picking up on all that movement before I fire, as I fire, and after I fire. So it can kind of understand where the round would actually go if you are doing a live fire. And I did go to the range and actually mount this thing onto the firearms. So it was kind of cool to be able to see that the Mantis was saying, okay, that shot was definitely going to be low left. And you can kind of see it actually happening on the target. Now overall with the Mantis, I've used it with dry fire and live fire. Um, live fire, I, I didn't have any issues unless I was shooting really fast. And I'll show you all the demos after this portion. I'll kind of timestamp it below. But I didn't have any issues with the live fire until I started shooting a little bit faster with the pistol. Uh, and of course, even with the, the rifle, it would have a little bit of the same effect. Now with dry firing, depending on the firearm, I know in the application you can go and you can kind of set which firearm you're working with but it doesn't necessarily factor in whether it's like a hammer fired or like a striker fired because you know when I'm using snap caps like the fake dummy rounds and I have a hammer fired pistol but what I was noticing with the Mantis is sometimes either when I would not necessarily when I was racking it for whatever reason I it's pretty good about picking up on that and understanding that's not a trigger pull but sometimes when I would lock the hammer down it would hear one of those like clicks and it would register as a shot so I'd get like a horrible score. Or when I would try and reset the trigger, it would hear that audible click and it would also try and register that as a shot. And luckily those shots weren't as bad because I was kind of generally on targets. But yeah, you can, you can kind of see how that's going to be a little bit of an issue with certain firearms. There might be a workaround, there might be something in the app, but I kind of tried looking around and I couldn't find anything to kind of help with that solution. Um, maybe like a sensitivity setting would make that a little bit better. But again, it is kind of hard to be able to tell something like that, that, you know, this is a trigger pull versus this, you know, I don't really know how they would be able to work that in, but it's just an issue that I've been able to see. Now, the bread and butter of how the Mantis is going to help you is through the application. So this is what it looks like when you actually have it. Again, you just need to press the button on the bottom of the Mantis and then connect it to your app. So it'll scan it. Sometimes you'll have to calibrate it and all you really have to do for that is place the weapon down. So it'll probably ask me to, to calibrate it. So you can just do something like open training. So I'll put the weapon down. It's gonna start calibrating it, which basically means like that's what the control is when the, the weapon is not moving at all. And just like that, we're, we're ready to go. It's super simple. You, you can like set up an account and whatnot, just you can kind of like save all your data and everything. And that's basically it. So this is the open training. This is kind of what I use the most. Basically, it's like whenever you wanna dry fire or live fire, if you just wanna see how your fundamentals are looking or kind of like how your, how your shots are looking when you're actually moving the weapon, this is probably the best bet when it comes to being able to pick up on that because it'll give you your scores. It'll show you your movements. It'll kind of give you all the scores for all of your shots and kind of give you like a little uh, a line chart kind of comparing all your shots as well. So if you're like, oh yeah, a little bit early on, I think the fundamentals were good, but then they started getting really sloppy. You can kind of see that in the app itself. And again, you can see there's a lot of awesome tools. So you have the open training, you have the shot timer, part times, you can do the shoot, no shoot, which is pretty cool. And again, you have stuff for days, kneeling, reload drills, cadence drills, hostage rescue, <laughs> USMC qualification. So, I mean, hey, if you know, you're know you're jarhead trying to get some, some training in, then uh, there you go. Yeah, a lot of really cool stuff. And you got like courses itself. So the app is, is great. Like it does a really fantastic job of giving you a lot of really good options. But for this video, we're going to work in the open training just so I can kind of show you guys how this actually works. So it was set to live, now I'm gonna set it back to dry fire. It's basically gonna say like, make sure you don't, you don't actually have any live rounds in your gun. I'm right-handed. And also in this menu, this is where you can kind of select whatever firearm you're using. So you can have pistol or rifle, you can you know find whatever pistol or rifle you're working with. Again, if you're right hand dominant, left hand dominant, if you're gonna be dry or live firing, all this stuff so yeah a lot of really cool options to you know give you the, the best sort of accuracy when it comes to actually picking up on the movement okay so really exaggerated sort of anticipation shot let's try this and see how it does 
Yeah, so yeah, definitely pushing that a little bit low. And then also since I'm using my, my dominant hand, I tend to push away from the shoulder. So we can kind of see, we got a nice score. Not, not so nice, you guys know what I mean. But yeah, it was low left. So let, let's try and get an accurate shot again and see if we can kind of compare those two. So again, try and use all my fundamentals. Hopefully the score is a little bit better than 69 but I'm kind of happy with that number two. Oh, that felt pretty good. That felt like a 95. 90, okay, I'll take it. And again, it was getting pushed a little bit to the left because I am firing with my dominant hand, so it's gonna be pushing a little bit that way, kind of pivoting off of that. Okay, so now let's actually compare the data itself. So again, this was my score now if you scroll over you can see all of your scores so the first shot again we got a 69 next one we got a 90 and then you can also see the time it took to get those shots so scroll over again we got that if you click the red it'll kind of give you a good like a uh, interpretation of of what you might be doing wrong now again you can imagine since i was firing only with my dominant hand i tend to squeeze a little bit harder since i'm not getting any of that grip from the support hand and in turn that that sort of tightens my fingers a little bit more. And that's kind of why we're seeing that and kind of why we're seeing it getting pushed a little bit as well. This is something that I see a lot. Um, now this is good if you're like a beginner or something you can kind of train uh, a little bit, kind of like change the placement up a little bit. But for me, since I've been shooting for, uh, I don't know, 10 years, this is a really hard thing for me to change. And I've tried changing it slightly, but I kind of just accept the fact at the end of the day that it's gonna be a little bit off as a result of that. But generally speaking, it's usually not too bad. Again, this is that line chart. So we can have, we have that first shot there, uh, wasn't too great. And then we have our second shot up there in the, I guess the ideal range, which is uh, 80 and above. And again, you can scroll over. Now this is really cool. So you can see all the movement in the firearm itself. So you have the blue, which is all the, the movements kind of before the shots. You have the yellow, which is like right before the shot actually broke. You have a little white X, which is kind of when the shot actually broke. And then you have the red, which is all the movements after the shot broke. So again, you can kind of see what you're doing. If your follow through is really bad, you're probably gonna get a lot of movements in the red. If you're anticipating, you're probably gonna see a lot of movements in the yellow, especially a lot of like low drops. This is something that'll kind of blow your mind a little bit when you see it the first time, like as far as how much movement there actually is. But again, like, this is, this is probably what I look at the most, like being able to compare the different scores, um, especially if you're working for time, you can kind of compare that as well. And of course, being able to kind of get those recommendations are really, really nice. Uh, it's a really awesome tool, not just for, you know, new shooters. It's great for experienced shooters as well. Now you might not necessarily be using the Mantis to see where your fundamentals are at. If you've been shooting for a while, you probably have a pretty good lock on your fundamentals and you know kind of what you tend to mess up. So I think it just allows you to amplify your training as far as being able to pinpoint some recommendations or maybe pinpointing some other fundamentals that are kind of you know messing those up a little bit more. I know for me, trigger control is the biggest thing that I try and focus on. But again, when I'm really focusing on that, there's other things that I mess up as far as like the pressure, how I'm actually holding the gun. I can see that you know maybe I'm, I'm healing the gun a little bit too much based off of recommendations just from the, the Mantis and the app. So although I'm trying to focus on getting some fundamentals better, cause I know I have the rest pretty much on lock, you can get complacent and the rest tend to get a little bit sloppy when you start focusing like that. So yeah, it's kind of, it's good for keeping you in check, but it's also great if you're just trying to work towards a specific goal. If you have like a, a pistol qualification, whether it be in the, the military or law enforcement, you can kind of work based off of the drills that you're actually going to need to be proficient at in that particular qualification. Or again, if you're just trying to go for like holster drills, if you're just trying to, you know, draw it out and get that first round impact, you can kind of see, you know, is your first round like a, a 20 or is it, you know, draw and get like an 80? And you'll kind of understand like an 80 is not that bad, especially when you start doing some fast stuff. Yeah, because once you start doing that, then it really starts testing your fundamentals, which is really cool because again, this thing will let you know if your fundamentals are just you know looking like crap, they're getting really sloppy. So as you're working to those goals, if you're trying to reduce time, if you're trying to get accuracy with speed, 
it'll let you know kind of, you know, what you need to slow down and focus on as you're doing that. So you're not just getting really fast and really sloppy at the same time. All right, so we're at the range. Now we're gonna be trying the Mantis with some live fire. So we have a Beretta 92X compact. So yeah, we're gonna be shooting at about seven yards. So nothing too crazy, but it is far enough to tell, even if we mess something up, kind of where it's actually pushing it. So we'll see what the Mantis is actually saying. You know, if the shot goes like bottom left or top right and see how it actually looks on paper and kind of track it like that. I think it will be kind of cool to compare them. But yeah, we have the Mantis set up. So yeah, this will be our first shots with the actual live fire. So let's see how it does. Okay. So pretty decent grouping, um, nothing spectacular, but yeah, let's see. So let's check out the shots. So it's tracked 11 shots. Um, I don't know exactly how much I fired to be honest. Uh, so this is a 13 round magazine and yeah, okay. So tracked 11 shots, I fired 11 shots. So let's go up and check the target and kind of compare it to what we've been seeing. So it looks like it's tracking most of these going a little bit to the right. Um, and what we're kind of seeing right now, I can see is most of, most of the shots went a little bit to the left. So yeah, let's go see. Okay, so looking at the scores, um, so yeah, the first shot's always gonna be better because you know that's like the first shot you fire before actually feeling the recoil. And then <laughs> you see a little bit of a downward trend, kind of refocus, I don't know what happened there. I just was in the zone, I guess. Uh, again, there was that one shot that was really solid. But again, it's kind of showing most of these going a little bit to the right. And you can kind of see here, I was aiming right here and most of them were a little bit left um that's probably just a little bit lack of pressure with my left hand my support hand um but yeah as far as the actual movement and whatnot of course you can break all that stuff down i'm not going to worry about that too much on the range because we kind of showcase that a little bit when we we're uh, doing the dry firing tightening the grip again pretty natural whenever you're actually doing a live fire um, kind of just a natural reaction to try and keep the pistol from moving too much too much trigger finger. I'm not going to worry about too, that too much because honestly, I'm not going to tra train to change that so much. Pushing forward, this is definitely anticipation right there. And again, once you start actually getting used to that recoil, it's going to be even harder and harder to kind of combat that. But again, the thing that it's kind of getting me is it's saying that these are going to be a little bit low and to the right. Um, but for the most part, it was pretty much just left. Like it wasn't too too low considering I was aiming like right here. It was mostly just left. Um, and again, I think that was just a little bit of like kind of weak support hand. So I'm going to try and shoot that again and use a Mantis and see if it's kind of giving me some of the same feedback that I would expect. And I'll kind of take it a little bit slower. All right, so we got, I think, another 11 rounds. So we're going to take this a little bit slower. This time I'm going to aim for the head just so we can kind of get a different point of aim.
Okay, so it's giving me these scores, and I understand that. Again, this is more of like marksmanship shooting kind of pace, but I am very, very close. So while it is giving me like 90s or whatever, maybe some 80s, you have to consider this is only like five to seven meters. So like the further I go out, the more I'm really going to see how this score is actually impacting everything. Cause yeah, there's not going to be too much of a difference between like, even like an 80 to a 100 when you're like super close. Like let's say this is a target right here. If I'm just slapping the trigger and getting all these horrible scores, the hole's probably still going to be like basically in the same spots. So something to consider, but let's go and check out the grouping and kind of see what we got as far as our read. Now, if we look at the scores, it, they look pretty much better across the board. And that's kind of just, again, taking it a little bit slower and applying those fundamentals a little bit better. Now there was this shot, um, 84. Now I feel like for me, like even if I have a lot of movement before the trigger actually breaks, at the last second, I can like kind of get it right back in the in the spot that I need it to be. But again, that is a lot of excess movement, so it's probably going to pick up as kind of a, a bad score. Um, but again, it's important to look at this stuff and then actually look at your grouping because it's it's not going to flex so much when you're when you're this close, obviously. But when you can actually take it a little bit further, break it down a little bit slower, as far as like what it's telling me. Of course, tightening grip, again, that's stuff that you're gonna get when you're doing like live fires, pushing forward stuff you're gonna get, too much trigger finger. So we're seeing a lot of the same stuff, but if you're like consistently like doing the, the same thing, if you're like, I guess if you're consistently messing up your fundamentals, that's not necessarily like a horrible thing. If you can, you know, get a good grouping and kind of still apply those fundamentals for the most part so it's pretty consistent then that's you know that's still pretty solid it's just as you move to different pistols if you're not applying those fundamentals as you should be for like every firearm you're going to start seeing a deviation in your in your shooting just because you know you're you're using the fundamentals as you normally would on one pistol but when you switch to another pistol it's going to affect it differently so let's try a rapid fire and let's see what kind of scores we can get on this thing and of course we're going to see that grouping is definitely going to get a little bit sloppier okay so again doing that rapid fire and again at about seven yards so the grouping is still probably going to look decent hopefully Hopefully, um, but yeah, we're gonna probably see some uh, some lower scores showing up. So let's do it. Okay. Um, I noticed a lot of those were going higher, and that's because I was trying to get the the sights back to the center. But I was like, yeah, that's pretty much where it should be, and then I'll just crack it from there. So. It's a little bit of kind of give and take and me just accepting that it's kind of on target, not necessarily going to be the same point of impact or point of aim as every other shot. Oh, okay. Well, actually, that's... <laughs> well, yeah, let's go ahead and stop it right there. <laughs> it, only it did only record one shot. Uh, okay, let's... I'll, I'll try it again, but not necessarily as fast. Yeah. I'm not sure what happened there. Let's try that again. I forgot this whole time I wasn't even wearing iPro. Definitely wear iPro when you're shooting, okay? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll do better at that next time. But yeah, so I'm gonna do 50% speed and see how that is. Um, but I, I'm not really sure if it's gonna work. So but let's try it at least. Give it a shot. All right, 10 more rounds at about 50% speed. Okay. Uh, okay, not bad. Uh, that's definitely better. And we can definitely see uh, a lot of the fundamentals kind of going away a little bit, but uh, still pretty decent grouping. So I'm, I'm happy with, I sh with how I shot, but let's see how the Mantis says I shot. <laughs> okay, so grouping still pretty much in the center. Now looking at this, again, we got a lot more of the, uh, the red kind of going out there a little bit still pretty much saying the same thing i think it's just more to a, like a higher degree of me messing that stuff up so as far as that so the trends not too bad i don't know what happened there that one was horrible but let's see what the actual scores were so definitely yeah some 80s uh 54 i don't know which one that one maybe one of those little guys but yeah okay so that one was was a little bit bad so yeah but 
overall you can kind of expect that again shooting a little bit faster so at least it, it picked up on those and i think that was still a pretty reasonable speed if it couldn't pick up on those then there'd definitely be some some more concerns but shooting a little bit quicker i think maybe it just doesn't have time to like reset the gyroscopes or or something i don't know something technical that i don't really understand but yeah so the hold movement you can see is definitely going to be larger because there's less time in between so i'm trying to immediately get it back and get that shot going um so there's less focus on getting the sights to the same spot if that makes sense This is pretty cool. Yeah, okay, so some of those really low scores, it definitely picked up on. As far as like the low left, we got those like right. Yeah, you can see some of those low left shots. So that is actually pretty cool. The first ones were good and then you started feeling some of that recoil, brought it back a little bit and then <laughs> these were uh, kind of like the low left shots that we were seeing over there. Didn't know it scored that low. <laughs> now on the channel, I have always been an advocate for different types of training, whether it be dry firing, airsoft, you know, of course, actually going on the range, even like doing particular drills, depending on what your goals are and what you're actually, you know, intending to use the firearm for, that will kind of uh, allow you to understand what your drill should be and kind of what your training focus should look like. But dry firing, again, is an incredible tool. Airsoft is an incredible tool, but you need to understand the limitations of each. But just being able to add to it using something like the Mantis it is amazing. And again, like just being able to dry fire, it's cool because I can see like, oh yeah, my sights didn't really move that much. Or, you know, I'm kind of fighting anticipation a little bit when I'm doing the dry fire. But then again, I can take this, I can dry fire with it, I can see that I'm doing pretty solid. And then I can go out on the range and see, you know, how those fundamentals change because things do start changing. If you're doing a live fire, you'll probably notice your first shot is like a 96. Like it's really solid because you're so used to dry firing. But then once you feel that recoil and you start doing some follow on shots, you can see those fundamentals start getting a little bit sloppy because now you're really trying to, to mentally fight against the anticipation. Uh, and it's just, it's really cool to see. Now I do have some clips, I'll throw them up after this so you guys can kind of see uh, maybe some of the issues that I had, but also us taking it on the range and, and kind of seeing how it actually worked and how it compared to the dry firing. Because again, it is such a small little thing, but it really does tell you a lot about how you're shooting and how you can improve your shooting. But yeah, that is basically it for this video. Again, I am a huge advocate of doing all types of training, dry fire, live fire, uh, any types of like scenario driven training. It's just going to make you better, more proficient, more confident with your skills. And being able to have something that's telling you like, okay, you're, you're messing this up or you're doing this great. It's kind of great to be able to validate what you're thinking and what you're feeling on an application. And just with like a little device you can take and attach to, you know, whatever gun you're actually working with. And again, the versatility is fantastic as well. Cause you know, even if you don't have a Picatinny rail, you have those other mounting options. And if you do, again, you can just slap it on, you can, you know, link it, set it up on the app and you're good to go. So it, it's just a cool thing, especially it's something you could, you could just give to somebody else. They can download the app, they can use your phone or what have you, and they can see how their fundamentals are looking. So it's an easy thing to kind of share with somebody else. I mean, you're not going to you know necessarily be dry firing with them all day and all night, but if you can just give it to them and say, hey, try this out and, and see if you can get any good recommendation or, or some good feedback, it's just a great thing to have. And it's a great thing to be able to offer to people as well, especially if you're like an instructor or something and you're trying to have another visual representation of what some people might be messing up. But yeah, I think it's a great tool. Again, there are a little bit of, of you know, fidgety things here and there, but overall it works very well and it works for its intended purpose, which I mean, I guess if you're buying it, you would kind of want that. But yeah, I think it's a great tool. 
Um, of course, I'll put a link down in the, the video description if you guys want to go and check out the products. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff from Mantis. So if you guys are watching, definitely keep up the good work. Keep allowing us to better ourselves with these products. But of course, let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any recommendations, any feedback, if you guys have used the Mantis yourself, let me know what you liked about it, what you didn't like, and let me know what you liked or didn't like about this video. If you have anything to recommend as far as changes or anything to recommend as far as other training tools for me to check out, then definitely let me know and I'd like to, to get my hands on them, try and check them out because again, like we're all trying to better ourselves. If we're in, kind of in that gun community, we're always trying to get better and it's just nice to have a bunch of different tools to get better and, and kind of test ourselves. And, and again, I think the app does a good job because you have a lot of other challenges and stuff you can work to. Even if it's stuff that you didn't think about doing before, you have those at your disposal and you can do all the stuff in the comfort of your own house, which is even better. You know, you can kind of set the stage. There's no distractions or anything. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and yeah, definitely go and check out the product because it's pretty cool. But that's it for this video. I'll see y'all in the next one.